Well, you know what they say about man's best friend, don't you? What's up, everybody? Steph Dice here. Welcome to a Minisode Monday. What's a Minisode Monday? Well, a Minisode Monday is where I make a Minisode about a what if that is currently in production. This will basically tie loose ends as far as what's happening in the story. So if you haven't checked out What If the Dragons Were Swapped, why don't you go ahead and check that out before you start this part and before you start the previous parts of this very mini-sode, because this has to do when everybody's over on Namek. Last time, Gohan had completed his training with Korn, and Korn wanted him to go up, but something happened, and you're going to have to watch the previous part in order to see what the heck happened. In the meantime, Shu actually came back alone from the nearby city without a Mai. Naturally, this made Gohan concerned because he started actually liking these two. It, hanging out with them, traveling together, it was something really good. So, he wants to find Mai just as much as Shu wants to find Mai right now. As soon as Gohan says his goodbyes to Upa and Bora, they head to the nightlit city in order to try to find Mai. How do they get there? Well, it's not going to happen with the Nimbus Cloud. Shu's still technically a bad guy here. Nimbus won't let him on. Nope. However, Shu should still have his own capsules, and he should have a small enough bike for his small enough body and Gohan to fit on. So, a motorcycle ride is exactly what's going on here. So what happened? Why did Mai come back with you? Well, kid, she and I kind of didn't believe this story going around about kids getting stolen from this town. And apparently, it's not just kids, but Mai as well. This thing just flew out of nowhere. It looked like some sort of giant plane thing. Only it wasn't giant. It was kind of small looking. That's kind of like what knocked the power pole down from Corrin's tower. We have to go back and find that once we find Mai. Uh, don't you worry about some silly stick, Gohan. We gotta worry about Mai right now. Luckily for them, the moon was not full on this nightly drive, and they make it to the town. In town, they're mainly walking the streets and asking people, shop owners who are still open, if they saw anything. And apparently this rumor goes around of the robot phantom that ends up taking people in the middle of the day or the middle of the night. This thing can strike at any given time, stealing preferably young or able-bodied women. Of course, the story would say women, but we all know that it's not just women being taken by Dr. Jarreau. Anybody that is able-bodied would do just fine for his experiments. Gohan and Shu do end up asking one guy, and he just kind of seems like the typical sort of street punk, really. But he says, yeah, I know a couple of things. Come on, I'll introduce you to a couple of people that have seen a couple of things, if you catch them adrift. Sure enough, they fall hook, line, and sinker into a trap in an alleyway. However, the street thugs don't really expect Gohan to have a power level the way he does. That training with Korin definitely helps. Up until, you know, Shu being a little bit more cowardly than more active, gets jumped on by one of the guys and uh, has a knife attached to his throat. Yeah, Pipsqueak, if you don't want me to slit the throat of your precious little doggy, you're gonna back up and- Oh! Just then, a stranger pistol whips the guy in the back of the head, causing him to fall unconscious, freeing Shu. Taking this moment of distraction, one of the guys tries to jump Gohan, and that's when Shu runs in and kicks that guy across the face, drawing his sword and threatening them. Give Shu some credit, he can be quick when he uh, is pushed. Shu quickly unites with Gohan in all of this and draws his sword at the stranger because the stranger has a fucking gun. As the gang are shooed aside by the gentleman who just pistol whipped that guy, the guy just stands there and looks at the two. I'm really impressed. Thanks for your help, mister. Um, my name's Gohan, and this is Shu. Gohan and Shu, huh? Well, you might want to be a little bit more careful around this part of town. A lot of weirdos around here. Aren't you gonna tell us your name? Maybe later, kid. But right now, I just saw that and I thought, mm, let's go ahead and have some fun. Besides, we're always dealing with those clowns. Those clowns? Who were they? Ah, uh, just your local run-of-the-mill miscreants, gang members. And this is kind of a dangerous city. Gingertown ain't no laughing matter. Well, I can be tough, it's just that guy got the jump on me is all. Yeah, and I was handling myself. I just didn't want to accidentally go too far. Yeah, I saw your moves, kid. Kind of impressive. And you too, dog. What I got to see until you got jumped. Anyways, see ya. Wait, don't go! We need information! 
Our friend was taken by this robot phantom character. I, I followed as quick as I could, but I couldn't catch up. Robot phantom? So you believe the stories? <laughs> as if. I'm serious! He kind of swooped in as we were heading back to meet our friend here with a bunch of supplies from this town! I think he even took the dog treats. Hmm, an eyewitness, huh? That kind of changes things. Usually it's just a big ghost story about people going missing or some other thing. For all I know, those people could have been bad and got the cops on them. Or it could have been some of those jokers out for another kill. This town really is dangerous, isn't it? No kidding, kid. Anyways, you said you saw it. Why don't you come back with me to my hideout? I'm sure me and my sis would enjoy this story. But what's your name? If we're going back to your place, we should at least know your name. I'll tell you when we get a little closer, kid. I don't trust you that much. Sure enough, they follow the stranger as he heads closer to a women's sort of store, a boutique of some kind, because his sister was naturally late night shopping. Two blocks out from where they were shopping, a human-like machine ends up bursting out of the clothing boutique, carrying this blonde-haired young woman as she's screaming and struggling to try to get out of its grip. Wesley! Hey, that's the thing that took my! Wait, what? Uh, flying Nimbus! Gohan boards the Flying Nimbus and takes off after the drone. Sure enough, the blonde haired girl is still struggling and trying to kick it, trying to punch it, but it's got its grips right there. Luckily, Gohan is on the way, on the Flying Nimbus, able to keep up with the drone. Relatively okay. After a couple of punches, a couple of hits, not seeming to phase the machine, the machine ends up blasting its jets a bit in order to get out of there and knock Gohan off of the Flying Nimbus. The Flying Nimbus catches Gohan and he watches the light go out in the distance. Catching up with the black haired stranger and Shu, did you at least get a sight of where it was going? We need to find my! And we need to find my sister. Whoever took her is gonna pay. Well, that drone headed off into the distance. Uh, maybe that's where it's going. Its hideout must be up there. The guy pops a capsule and out comes a dirt bike. He gets on, gets shoe on it, and Gohan flies along the two as they go to try to find Lapis's sister, Lazuli, who has been taken by the evil Dr. Giro. Luckily, Giro wanted this to happen. Perfect. Gohan is walking right into his clutches. And that is where we're going to leave this mini-sode for right. So what do you think that the overall plan of Dr. Giro is when it comes down to getting Gohan into his lab? What about Lazuli and Mai? Will different androids show up? Will Mai end up becoming an android? Will Lazuli be able to be saved before Lapis can get to her? Go ahead and leave your comment below! For more what ifs in the realms of video gaming and Dragon Ball alike, such as the mini Minnesota Monday that this is about, what if the dragons were swapped, where Shenron is Namek's dragon and uh, Perunga is Earth's dragon, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, or you want to interact with light fans, check out the Stev Discord or the Stev Des Patreon in the Stev Des description below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.